Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazad of Chess Channel and welcome back to the Champion Chester Everything Masters in 2023. So we're now in the quarterfinal stage of this beautiful chess event and we're starting now this knockout stage with a beautiful and sharp tactical match between Magnus Carlsen and then Alexis Sarana. So you probably know the grip uh, of this chess event, the winner is the better out of four games, so if the match ends with an equal result then you have to play additional games, maybe afterwards also the so-called Armageddon game. So we are diving into the game one, in my opinion the game one between Magnus Carlsen and Alexis Sarana was really one of the most spectacular games of this event so far uh, really a wild idea will happen here because Magnus Carlsen will change also a little bit the theory of the Catalan opening he'll play a really new beautiful approach of the Catalan opening that I didn't see so far really a, such a such an aggressive way to play the Catalan opening as I said in my opinion a really really beautiful game be prepared this is simply a Magnus Carlsen from another dimension so let's see now the game Magnus opened with the move d4 knight to f6 was played by Sarana we have c4 by Magnus e6 and after move knight to f3 Magnus goes into this anti nimzo or counter nimzo Indian setup he's not playing knight to c3 because probably the move bishop to b4 uh, would be black's continuation going into the nimzo Indian defense so now after move d5 I think many players when they're playing against Magnus Carlsen are waiting now for Magnus decision because I like to call the move knight to c3 the Vladimir Klitschko move uh, you can of course get destroyed by Vladimir Klitschko but you can also go the whole 12 rounds against Klitschko uh, the move g3 I like to call it the Mike Tyson move because with the move g3 you're going into the Catalan and the game could be over very soon because uh, Mike Tyson always try to knock you down immediately not going the whole 12 rounds so you can guess what Magnus is doing Magnus goes, Carlson goes into this Mike Tyson variation goes into the Catalan plays now really the sharpest way plays now the most aggressive line so in the continuation bishop to b4 this is the way to go stopping a little bit the progress of white bishop to e7 bishop to g2 and now f move c6 this is really a common way to play to to play against the mike tyson variation of the queen's game the client i'm just kidding but as i said f move c6 you have really a great structure and you see the bishop on d2 it's not going to stay there forever magnus will need another tempo in order to pr improve the piece activity so that's why here queen to c2 connecting the queen to the pawn and now after move knight to d7 here bishop to f4 was played by Magnus Carlsen. I think when you meet this move bishop to h4 in my opinion when I played many times the Catalan uh, from black's perspective and then when I reached this position I liked always this move knight to h5 I don't tolerate this bishop on, on f4 and now if the bishop comes on d2 then we could go uh, with the move b6 and again the bishop is on the square that will not stay there forever of course our knight is also not staying there forever but if we get challenged then we can retreat but I don't like um, here um, the fact that the bishop is very active here so in many occasions if for instance c takes d5 happens maybe e takes d5 you could be also vulnerable uh, here around the square c7 so this is also a tactical shot that worried me many times okay uh, here Alexis Sarana goes casting after move h4 and this is now the new method that Magnus Carlsen introduced us here, he plays a flank attack immediately. Really, really wild stuff. And there's only one player who played this move h4 before in chess history. Can you guess who did uh, this kind of a wild line in chess history? Magnus Carlsen. So Magnus Carlsen played also this line against Ding Liren in 2022 and he destroyed Ding uh, with the white pieces also in this particular position. So actually this is really now Magnus Carlsen's idea to play the Catalan opening. And of course, uh, what is the actual idea about this move? For instance, we could go B6. This is the normal way. For instance, if we play Knight to G5, the problem uh, I think when we go into this line to, with the move g5 h6 doesn't even make sense we can go knight to c3 and actually black can never take out uh, the knight on g5 because uh, you're getting into this tactical shot after h6 g5 the knight has to move we pick up here the knight and look at this you're getting probably destroyed here around the square h7 so but that's maybe the point about this move h4 just to go knight to g5 and uh, play sort of an annoying move with your knight but actually uh, black doesn't have to even react you can leave the knight on g5 and uh, maybe battle then afterwards for the center maybe also for the queen side so as i said maybe the knight will come on g5 but don't get provoked by this knight just leave it there and don't try to weaken your pawn structure with moves like h6 so in the continuation here uh, sarana goes with this normal idea b6 which is in my opinion really the best of ways uh, because the bishop 
on c8 is a bad piece and you will try to get it on a6 where it's attacking of course the c4 pawn but now i have removed knight to c3 that magnus carson played notice that the queen is not connected anymore to the pawn on c4 and in my opinion there are simply only two good moves now for black you can play the move d takes c4 you have to play that now finally you have to force a really wild line or you have to play bishop to a6 here and finally challenging uh here the pawn on c4 but what sarana did he played now the move bishop to b7 and this is in my opinion simply too passive this Bishop on b7, okay, it's controlling some squares, but it's simply paralyzed by its own pawn structure. I myself don't like this move, I have to say it. In my opinion, it allows here Magnus Carlsen to play aggressively now, and Magnus does it, of course, uh, with the move e4. And you notice you didn't play bishop to a6, you didn't play d takes c4, now it's a little bit too slow, now the pawns are storming. Magnus got what he wanted he wanted to play the move e4 anyway and look at this you even left the bishop on f4 you never challenged it with knight to h5 you never played aggressively now magnus has basically a beautiful peace activity has a pawn storm has a centralized queen and now he it's also flexible he can maybe if he get challenged on the e file he can also castle on the queen side he doesn't have to castle on the king side so in my opinion already already from a strategic point of view really a bad position for black although the evaluation is about equal but i i'm again pointing out this is magnus carson and he plays so aggressively now already you have to now play really the best of moves in order to stay now in the game so in the continuation sarana plays d takes e4 now magnus goes knight to g5 he doesn't want to take out the, the pawn immediately he has this activity and you see now he played again those on this uh, fishing pole idea uh, if he get challenged with the move h6 he's not going to retreat with this knight because after h6 g5 the knight gets deflected and then of course the h file could get open and again you could have uh, tactical problems here around the square h7 so now sarana makes maybe his first really inaccuracy in the game he plays now the move c5 this move meets with a certain idea which says that you should break in the center when you get attacked on the flanks but actually i th i like even this move more bishop to b4 battling for the e4 a little bit further because now after queenside castling that maybe white could play we can pick up uh here the knight after queen to c3 now we can play maybe the move c5 look at this after d takes c5 we don't even take out the pawn we get out of the d file and now we are on the attacking side i think now files could get to open b5 uh, we can even sacrifice some pawn just in order to open here somehow the c file so i suddenly like uh, um now black's position especially because of the fact that now we are on the attacking side from black's perspective on the other hand look at this c5 seems tempting but magnus is saying I'm locking now the center with the move d5, although I'm sacrificing again maybe a pawn in the center, but I'll try to castle the queen side, and now uh, look at this, the c file is never going to get open, so now queen side castling is a realistic chance, it's a different story, the c file is not going to get open, so in the continuation e takes d5, c takes d5 by, uh, by Magnus Carlsen, and now Alexis Sarana plays the main mistake in his game, he plays now the move knight to h5. Probably he was bothered by this line, knight to d5, uh, you have to play knight takes d5, now bishop to d5, and now after queenside casting, actor, actually this is defendable with the move knight to f6, and the problem is now white cannot take, knight takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop to e4, bishop to e4, and you see now also the queen is hanging, you can pick up of course uh, here this piece, and now we step back, and this should be a good position for um uh for for black but after move knight to d5 would probably bother sarana here is after knight to d5 bishop to d5 this idea f3 uh over here in the continuation after move knight to f6 and queenside casting f3 would have been very very dangerous because after e takes f3 bishop to f3 and now the bishop gets pinged but actually black should go into this line bishop to f3 sacrificing the queen and here after rook to f8 rook to f8 here black is even fine the engine loves also here black's position although you don't have the queen but that you have a minor piece and the rook in this particular position so maybe you can survive now this one especially because of the fact that we have here also a three versus two pawn majority here also a three versus two pawn majority so in my opinion this should be a playable position but after c takes d d5 that magnus carlson played sarana didn't take out uh the pawn on d5 sarana plays now the move knight to h5 and there is a rule in says in chess that says the knight on the on the rim is uh, grim which is really really wild 
the knight is not good there anymore. At least it's not protecting anymore the h7 square. Now in the continuation, Magnus is going with bishop to e3, retreats now, and he has now a powerful attack. Uh, you cannot defend anymore uh, the pawn on e4 with f5, e6 is weak. There's nothing that can be done. For instance, even if you try h6 here, again, we're having this fishing pole tactic. You don't retreat with the knight, you just continue with knight to e4. And there is now the threat, knight to d6, liberating the line. Uh, liberating the diagonal and now of course delivering checkmate on h7 this is now the main tactical shot for instance if you pick up the knight again this tactic was always present through the whole game then h takes g5 uh, liberating the h file g6 look at the g4 we're starting to push the pawns f4 f5 you can maybe pick up this one but now we queenside castle we play something like bishop to f3 bishop to e4 queen to h2 and you're going to probably deliver checkmate in the next couple moves on the h file so see this tactic was always present in the continuation uh, Sarana tried now to move f5 but at least now this uh, weak uh, square in the position knight to e6 by Magnus after queen to b8 Magnus doesn't want to even take out the rook he plays now g4 which is of course a good way he's trying now again to open the diagonal uh, f takes g4 bishop to e4 look at this the, the 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 attack is coming very very well stuff knight to f6 sarana brings now a new defender into the game but now magnus picks up the rook queen to f8 now finally queenside castle which is a good choice of course now we have extra material and we have a beautiful attack so now we can of course use maybe this other rooks into the game so nothing spectacular but uh, magnus uh, realized that he has now great winning chances so bishop to d6 bishop to f5 rook to e8 rook to e1 uh, we have king to h8 king to b1 and now after move a6 magnus gets these pieces into a better activity here very good moves and now rook to e6 this is now the whole of the position it's almost like in this tetris game where everything fits uh where it's supposed to be the rook is a very very powerful piece here and it's quite annoying of course to handle the rook so that's why rook to d8 was played by sarana but magnus continues the pressure knight to e4 bishop to f4 bishop to f6 knight to f6 knight takes f6 g takes f6 and now magnus is coming with the queen into the game the bishop has to step back the p the pawn is weak the h7 is weak so it's simply a one-way ticket c4 queen to h5 and after queen to g8 a rook to e7 in this position alexis sarana resigned there's no good defense against this queen to h7 move so magnus won his game uh his first game he won also the whole match uh with uh, uh one more win and with the drawish result so with two and a half points against sarana's uh, um uh, half of the point really really great performance by magnus carlson but also we have to say it a wild way to play the catalan really really wild stuff how magnus is producing these ideas maybe this is not the optimal way but sometimes in chess it's good uh, to get your opponent out of uh, the theory book because now that you're getting into an open battle and who is probably the battle player will eventually win the game so in my opinion getting out of theory can be really a nice uh, nice idea in this fast time formats uh, in classical time format chess maybe sarana would find good defensive ideas but in this fast time format you just play all your feelings sometimes and you see when it comes to intuitive play Magnus Carlsen is much much stronger and he all played his opponent really with some cool tactical play then eventually so okay I hope that you enjoyed the game I really enjoyed it a lot really really cool ideas in the Catalan if you want to see maybe more about the Catalan you can also check out our playlist uh, it's a really beautiful opening uh, and if you want to see maybe some other commented chess games here on my YouTube chess channel here's the link of our playlist you can also check out some previous games that we have analyzed and if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon with some more videos and chess is the best, of course.